Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at the potential difference in neurons, the sodium-potassium pump, removal of potassium ions, organic anions, and then we'll finish with a summary. So when we're discussing the impulse of electrical signals across neurons, we need to be able to understand certain terms. And the first term we need to understand is potential difference, sometimes also known as voltage. So neurons themselves, which are the cells of the nerve system, have a negative resting potential across their cell membrane. So all the cells of the body have a membrane around them, and across that membrane, we find a particular electrical setup based on different ions inside and outside of the cell. And the difference in the electrical potential is called that potential difference. And when the cells aren't really doing anything, we call this a resting potential. So neurons, when they're not doing anything or taking part in any transmission, at rest, they have this particular potential across their cell membrane. And actually, we describe it as a negative resting potential. So when we say this, it means that the inside of the cell is more negative compared to the outside of the cell, which is more positive. So the potential of a cell is always referring to inside compared to the outside. So for a nerve cell, a neuron, it's negative more in the inside than it is on the outside. And the reason that it has a negative membrane potential isn't necessarily just because it has negative things inside the cell. It's because the outside of the neuron has more positive charge than the inside does. So outside of the cell, we see particular ions which are positively charged surrounding the cell. And there are more positives outside than there are inside. There are some inside, but most of them are outside. And remember, the cell is dealing with lots of ions because we need these for important processes. And most of the positively charged ions are kept outside of the cell. And this is why, even though there is some positive inside, it's more negative than the outside. So if we were to take a negative ion, it would require energy for it to enter the cell. So let's illustrate this. Let's say that this side is the inside of the cell. Here's the membrane. And this would be the outside. Now we've already said that the resting potential is negative. So inside, it's mostly a negative charge compared to the outside. And the outside is therefore relatively positive. So you just need to think of it as relatives to each other. Now if we were to take a negative ion, the negative ion is going to repel other negative things and it's going to be attracted to positive things. So if we're trying to put this into a cell, it requires energy because it's going against what it wants to do. It's almost like thinking about active transport. In order to get something negative to a negative area, we need required energy to force it through. And the energy change that happens in the negative ions when they move from the outside to the inside is called the potential difference. So by definition, the resting potential is the potential difference across the membrane while the neuron is at rest. So potential is that difference in potential, the difference in electrical potential. And on the other hand, if we took a positive ion, if we put it through the membrane, it would gain energy, passing the membrane and entering the cell. Because remember, on the outside, we have many positive charges compared to the inside, which is mostly negative. And so in a way, the positive ion, which we have here, wants to go through. So if it did this, it would gain energy rather than losing energy before. So this is what it wants to do down its gradient. So positives want to go to where there are less of them, and negatives want to go to where there are less of them too. Very similarly to diffusion. So the important rule to remember is that opposite charges attract and similar charges repel each other. So if two positives were to come together, they would repel each other because they're the same. If a positive approached a negative, they would attract each other. So opposite charges attract. So for this resting potential to be negative at the neuron, it's only possible when the outside of the cell is more positively charged than the inside. So again, we have more positive charge outside, inside we have less. So it's a negative resting potential. So because we have more positives outside, the positive ions are gonna be repelled from this outside very positive area, and they want to go to the inside, they get attracted to the inside. So there's this kind of resting want for the positive ions to go through the cell where there are more negatives, and there are more positive outside repelling it through. So at rest, the membrane is stopping it from doing this, but it wants to go inside. And this is an important setup mechanism for the impulse to pass through a neuron. The resting potential is measured in millivolts, or little m capital V,
and for a neuron it's about minus 60 millivolts. So that difference between inside and the inside compared to the outside is minus 60 millivolts. So now that we know that the neuron at rest has a negative potential across its membrane, we need to know two things. How does it set this up? And also how does it keep this set up? Because those ions want to move an equal their gradients out. How does it stop them from doing this naturally? So the resting main potential in neurons is maintained by keeping more positive ions outside the cell compared to inside the cell. So remember, when we're looking at the nerve cell membrane at rest, and this is the outside compared to the inside, it's negative inside and it's positive outside. And because of this, positives want to come in and negatives want to leave by those forces of attraction. So we need something that maintains this while the cell is at rest. It keeps pushing those positives out of the cell so that the outside is more positive than the inside. This is how it achieves that negative resting potential. And it's done through the action of a protein called the sodium potassium pump. So a pump is a type of protein which uses ATP to do its work. And in doing so, the energy is released to pump something against its concentration gradient. So the sodium potassium pump in particular uses ATP to pump three sodium ions out of the cell and two potassium ions into the cell. So let's illustrate how that works. Here's the sodium potassium pump, often abbreviated as Na slash K pump. And what we're saying is that we've got the outside of the cell here and we've got the inside here. So the first step is that ATP is hydrolyzed into ADP and PI because this releases the energy to put things against their gradient. And what it does is it sends three sodiums or three sodium ions out of the protein to the outside and it takes two potassium ions as an exchange inside. So eventually you get more potassiums inside the cell whilst sodium builds up outside the cell. So every time this happens, we get a net loss of one positive charge from the cell each time. So it's not the most efficient thing because obviously we're sending out three sodiums every time we bring in two potassiums. But we're still losing one charge every time we do this. If three go out and two come in, we've lost one to the outside. So it is becoming more positive on the outside. And overall, this results in the neuron with a more positive charge outside the cell than inside. And so we have this negative resting potential set up. So if it keeps doing this, even though we say the neuron is at rest, actually it's working very hard to maintaining or to maintain this negative membrane potential. And resting doesn't mean it's doing nothing. It's actually using ATP very hard to send these positive charges outside of the cell so that this negative membrane potential is ready in case an action potential comes along. So the sodium potassium pump does create a negative resting potential, but it also changes the concentration of ions inside and outside the cell. If you imagine this pump keeps working over time, we're going to have a massive buildup of sodium outside the cell, and we're going to have a massive buildup of potassium inside the cell. So we're going to get a massive concentration buildup. And just to illustrate that, the pump as a result has a high potassium ion concentration inside and a high sodium ion concentration outside the cell. The membrane of the neurons is permeable to potassium ions through potassium channels, but it's not permeable to sodium. So again, if we consider the cell membrane outside and inside, and through particular proteins known as potassium channels, the potassium which has been sent in from that pump before is building up. So it's now able to leave to outside the cell because there's obviously going to be a massive buildup here in its concentration gradient and by diffusion or technically facilitated diffusion it leaves. There's actually two types of gradient acting on these potassium ions an electrical gradient and a concentration gradient. So an electrical gradient is telling us where it wants to go compared to a positive versus negative sort of theme. A concentration gradient is telling us where does it want to go from high to low and they can act at the same time. Sometimes they oppose each other. So inside the cell, remember that the sodium potassium pump is sending in potassium ions, and so we're getting this buildup of concentration. The electrical gradient pulls potassium ions into the cell, but the concentration gradient is pulling them out of the cell. So let's recap what we have. We have the sodium potassium pump sending potassium ions into the cell. And it's doing this as it removes three sodium. So actually, the cell inside is becoming more negative. And so the draw 
the electrical gradient is pulling potassium ions into the cell. On the other hand though, the concentration gradient is pushing them out of the cell because there are so many potassiums building up inside, they want to go from where there are more of them to where there are less. So the concentration gradient is pushing it out. So we've got two opposing forces here. The electrical gradient pulling it in because the cell is negative inside and a concentration gradient pushing potassium out because it's building up because of this pump action. It's the concentration gradient that actually has the stronger effect. And so because of this, the potassium ions leave the cell through these channels. So we have our sodium potassium pump causing the entrance of two potassiums and a loss of three sodiums, creating a negative internal environment of the cell. Although the potassium is attracted to this, the concentration of potassium is so high at this point and it's low outside that actually it's going to mostly go outside due to this concentration gradient. And of course it does this through these potassium channels in the membrane. And because of this, we now have a benefit because more positive charges are leaving the cell, as well as those sodiums that were being pumped out before, the resting potential of the neuron goes even lower, which is good because it wants to go lower. So initially we had this pump sending out sodium, but increasing the potassium inside, which was very slowly increasing the negative potential. But now the potassium is going to leave the cell through potassium channels just by facilitated diffusion, therefore making this even more negative, which is great because that's what the resting potential should be. The last component which actually contributes to this negative resting potential of the neurons are a family of anions called organic anions. So remember organic refers to carbon containing and the anions are always ions with a negative charge. So inside the cell we have these structures which are organic anions. And because they're negatively charged, of course, they're making the inside more negative. And because they're negatively charged molecules, they sit inside the neuron, they're going to decrease that membrane potential further. And they, they cannot leave because the membrane is impermeable to them, so they help to keep this neuron more negative inside. So whilst other ions are allowed to enter and leave through the membrane, these ones are not allowed to leave the cell. So they stay inside and give it the negative potential that it needs. So this combined with the action of the sodium potassium pump and that equilibrium of potassium keeps the cell at minus 70 millivolts. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level biology resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap revised smiley face and together let's make A-level biology a walk in the park.